what do you feel are some of the more kind of applicable things that you've seen people be able to apply in the day to day? A couple of things there. I think one of the common misconceptions about communication is everybody's communicating from a same, same level playing field, right? Um, you know, I think one of the big challenges that people have from a communication perspective, and obviously all of sales is communication, um, is that everybody's coming at it with the same toolkit. Everything's coming at it with, um, you know, a, a similar mindset. It couldn't be further from the truth, right? Um, so when, when we take in information, we're taking in a lot of information at all at the same time. And we're, we're basically encoding it in our internal representation with our senses. So we intake all of this information. We've got to make sense of it internally. And then what happens is we try to use language to then communicate that to another human being. So we're trying to communicate our experience or trying to communicate a thought that we have, and we're utilizing language to do that. But unfortunately, what happens is when we intake something, it goes through filters. There's three different levels of filters in which it goes through, which is a generalization, a deletion, or a distortion, so that we can fit things into our model of the world and help them make sense. People apply this, you know, with, with more kind of um, tactical rigor or tactical abilities to kind of master maybe some of the, the easier to understand kind of initial concepts of NLP. What are maybe the top one or two ways? I'll give you two, um, just kind of really quick down and dirty kind of takeaways that you can run with, you know, leaving this. Um, but to do that, let me kind of take a step back and give you like the, the foundational um, kind of level of it, right? Um, you know, in sales, everything boils down to communication. And ultimately in NLP, the result of the communication is the responsibility of the communicator, right? I mean, how many times have you had, you talk to an SDR, an account executive that gets off the phone and they're like, oh, that person sucks, right? Well, they didn't suck. Yeah. You, you didn't convey the message that needed to be conveyed, right? So you, the first thing first, you, have to take, you, have to, you have to take personal responsibility for the output or the effectiveness of that communication before anything else. If they don't get the message, it's because you didn't deliver it properly, right? Um, so that's, yeah. that's pretty foundational. And then a, a secondary takeaway of that is when you're communicating with another human being, know that they're communicating from a very different viewpoint. They see things very differently because they have to. They intake all of this information in through their senses. They encode it. And when they do that, in order to make sense of that information, it goes through three levels of filters, which is deletions, which are rather deletions, distortions, and generalizations. So by the time that they regurgitate their experience that's been encoded on their side through their language, it's deleted, it's distorted, it's generalized in a lot of different ways. And so you're both doing this dance back and forth with this language that really only has a subset of information associated with it. So one of the things that I recommend right off the bat is, is to record yourself doing your pitch, right? Record yourself having a couple of conversations. And one of the yeah. things that you'll notice right away is that you talk at a very, very general level. Very, very, in, very, very infrequently do sales folks actually talk at a very granular level all of the time because it's really easy for us to talk at a really high level. The challenge with talking at a very high level is that the – person that you're communicating with is forced to take their own context of that conversation. So if you want somebody to take away something specific from your conversation, you have to be very specific. And there's, um, you know, a, a lot of folks talk about the, the devil being in the details and really where we win is in the details. If we talk all the time up here, if we talk about generalities and we use things like everyone or always, and we, we talk in these kind of wandering generalities, then the person that we're communicating with is forced to take their own meaning away from that. And they're going to take a meaning away from that conversation. That's very different than the meaning that you want them to have. So I, it seems really obvious, but as you record yourself and you listen to yourself speak, what you'll find, even in this conversation, you'll find that we talk often in general conversation in, in a lot of generalities. So be very specific in what you actually want them to take away from that conversation. So that that's number one. There's a, there's a secondary piece of this that I, I think is really interesting from an NLP perspective. And it's this concept of anchoring. Um, I, you know, if, if you've been in the sales game for a, a little bit of time, um, you, you've heard some context of anchoring in some form or another. Yep. You, know, you, can, you can spatially anchor, you can auditorily anchor, you can visually anchor by just doing something really dramatic, right? And associating that with a particular state that somebody's in. But anchoring to me, one of the more profound ways that we can use it is we can anchor ourselves into a particular state. So, um, you know, and you can do this as, as quick as, um, you know, you and I having a conversation. Um, think, so do this, Jake. 
Um, think about a time, well, actually don't think about a time. You've, you've had a kick-ass experience probably in the last 48 hours. I know you love life and you live large. And um, I want you to go back there now and just put yourself back into that, uh, <laughs> into that kick-ass experience that you were having, right? And when you do that, it's going to create, so when that happens, there's either going to be a, a sound that you hear or there's going to be a picture that you see. All feelings are generated by either a, a, you saying something to yourself or hearing somebody else say something or a really big picture. Right? And one of the things that we have control of that a lot of folks don't know that they have control over is the sound of that and the picture itself. So when you take that picture that you already have, I can see you looking at it. If you make it a little bit bigger and make it bigger and bigger still and make it brighter, it's going to feel larger and larger. It's going to feel better and better. Uh, the same with the sound. If you have a sound like, you know, when I'm trying to get pumped up, you know, I talk to myself and I say things over and over and over again. As you, you start to feel that momentum build, you rock a little bit back and forth. You can kind of feel it get bigger, 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 bigger. And when you do that, all you need to do is find a place on your body where you have access to it and just press down. That's all you have to do. So then you shake it out a little bit. And the next time you want to feel good, all you have to do is go back to that spot, press it. You're going to bring back that same image, that same sound, and you're going to get pumped up. So one of the things that I recommend doing for a lot of folks is taking the time, put yourself in a place where you had a really great experience. Maybe it was you left a meeting, like for me, I, I, I delivered a, a pitch that for me, I, I thought was absolutely world class. And I walked out of there and I was basically fist pumping myself internally. Um, and I go back to that moment and I set an anchor for that for the next time that I go on a pitch because then I go in peak state. 